becoming president of this beautiful island, I have had the privilege of leading in different capacities. I've created my own company, taught in academic institutions, and led research projects. In all these years, I have realized that leading effectively can be challenging, but sustaining leadership can be an even bigger challenge. In my opinion, leadership is also about the choices you make. I have seen many leaders starting with laudable intentions, but failing and in the process lose the trust and confidence that the people had put in them. I have tried to understand this, and I would like to share with you some of my observations as to why this could be happening. In my opinion, one of the causes is the failure to listen and the failure to learn. While some may be impressed with how well you speak, the right people will be impressed with how well you listen. Great leaders are not just great listeners, but they assume a listening attitude. Being a leader should not be viewed as a license to increase the volume of rhetoric. Astute leaders know that there is far more to be gained by surrendering the floor than by dominating it. In this age of instant communication, when everyone seems to be in such a rush to communicate what's on their mind, they fail to realize the value of everything that can be gleaned from the minds of others. The real magic of two-way conversation is that to break the cycle of predictable, ineffective communication, replacing it with fresh thinking and actionable solutions. Listen to your competitors, your peers, your subordinates, and to those that care about you. When leaders engage with the willingness to be influenced, others are more open to be influenced as well. Subsequent to this is the process of learning and where to apply your newfound skills. I'm now more convinced than ever that good leaders develop through constant learning about their personalities, relationship and careers, but more importantly, take the time to reflect on past events to discern the lessons they offer. Other mistakes leaders tend to make is not to question their mistakes. Being a leader doesn't mean that you're always right or that you won't err. What being a leader means is airing the reasons for why you did something and then making yourselves accountable for the results, even if those you're accountable to don't directly work for you. That's how you truly sow the seeds of engagement. Think about it. Who would you rather trust? The person who denies anything is amiss, or the person who admits their error and then follows up with a plan to correct it? Better yet, what if that same person who admits they made a mistake reaches out to make things right. I've found that leaders who show their vulnerability and admit that they are human foster great engagement among their associates. In short, being accessible, answering questions, admitting mistakes and saying you're sorry are not liabilities. They are exactly the tools you can use to build your credibility and authority to lead. Another important feature about good leadership is to encourage and to motivate. You mustn't forget that you are only as good as your team. It is your job as a leader to set the bar, inspire and motivate your team to reach greatness. If you never push your team, you will remain stagnant. Sure, the work will get done, but don't expect to experience excitement and growth without encouraging them to operate out of their traditional comfort zone. You want to achieve excellence and mediocrity, right? So your team will not be inspired if you use fear as a motivator. Great leaders coach and teach their team. They are right there with them, not on the sidelines screaming and instilling fear. Keep your mind, as well as the minds of your entire team, fresh by holding frequent brainstorming sessions. This inspires and motivates your team to be constantly thinking of new innovative ideas. Great leaders, good leaders leave a trail 
and a legacy. Good leaders often go where there is no path and they leave a trail. We need to ask ourselves how we want to be remembered. We should plant the seeds for living our lives as if we matter. Considering your legacy gives you a compass to help you move with purpose and determination, even in the most uncertain times. Creating a legacy statement will help you commit to what you wrote down and live your life in the line with your higher values. Granted, becoming a leader is really hard, but it's definitely worth the effort. I have seen good leadership transform the lives of thousands of people. I have also seen how bad leadership has negatively impacted thousands of lives. So becoming a better leader requires a lot from an individual. It is tough and demanding, but it is definitely doable. The lessons I have shared with you are in no way the most conclusive lessons about leadership. There are, as a result of living a life of leadership over several years, and these lessons made a whole lot of difference in my journey. So make it a habit to listen to the people you're leading, even if you're a leader with several years of experience. Constantly inquire from those around you what mistakes you're making, and use same to make improvement, and more importantly, practice patience. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.